Was Ginny and Georgia actually a good show? Did it improve in season two? And what was the deal with the controversy? That's what we're talking about today and I'm so excited for this video because yes, I watched Ginny and Georgia. I can't believe it. It's been on my to-do list for literally like two years <laughs> when it first came out. I was like, I should watch that and I never got around to it, but it's fine. We're here now. We're doing it. So this is probably going to be a long video and it's going to be an interesting one because the answers I have to give you are not that simple. Like I have so many emotions towards this show, so many mixed feelings. And it's funny because I started out really disliking it and not seeing much value in it. Like honestly, I was finding it hard to watch, but as the show evolved, I saw a lot of its more redeeming qualities and I was like, wait, I'm actually starting to enjoy it. And then when the second season came around, I was definitely, I would say, binging it. Like, I was enjoying it, not gonna lie. And despite the fact that there were so many cringy scenes and things, I still found myself kind of addicted to it. So that's really interesting that the show managed to do that. So I definitely feel a lot more positively towards it now than I did in terms of whether I enjoyed it or not. But, but still, there's so many issues. It really reminds me of this weird mashup of Desperate Housewives, Gilmore Girls, and Glee all in one. So we're gonna talk about where I stand with the show as a whole. And yes, I was a bit harsh towards it at first, but I do want to talk about why, because I know some people think the show is perfect. It is far from that. But we're going to start with the characters. So I honestly think we should just get into it with Ginny because she is the character that I think received the most criticism and it's best to just get this out the way honestly because a lot of you guys will be waiting for what I have to say about this. So in many ways I sympathize with Ginny like she's had to move from place to place because her mum would get a new boyfriend, things would go wrong and then her mum would end up running and taking the kids with them. So Ginny has experienced a lot of instability in her life and I also felt bad because now they've moved to this new town. As much as she likes it, she feels very much marginalised and that's something her mum doesn't really understand because she has a white mum and a black dad and there's a lot of themes of racism and identity in this show that's very much it's sometimes the show is a bit actually overly woke in the sense that it's very obvious they spell everything out they could probably be a bit more subtle and that's something that happens with a lot of shows nowadays like with pretty little lies original sin it reminds me of that where they're just very in your face about it but i did not like Ginny's character at all when the show started to be honest i found her really um obnoxious and ungrateful and there were some things I liked about her, but I found a lot of her scenes really hard to watch. No hate to the actress or anything like that. It's just more um, the dialogue and the things they had her do. And just, it was really, really just difficult to watch. But then as the show went on, I saw so many more different sides of her. And then season two, she started going to therapy. And I was like, wait, I like Ginny. I do. I mean, I know she's flawed and everything, but... That's kind of the whole point of an interesting character, you know, and she also has so many good qualities and so many things about her that I genuinely like and a lot of really good, well-written, impactful scenes. So she's not my favorite character in the world, but she definitely grew on me a lot as the show went on, especially when she went to therapy, like I said, when we saw her. Um, talking about self-harming and how she felt like her mum never really made space for her or respected her boundaries and I just felt so bad and it gave a very much needed insight into why she behaves the way she does and why she feels the way that she feels because there was very much in season one this angsty moody teenager act going on but without much explanation about why this was happening so she would rebel against her mom or dye her hair blue and do these things that were bothersome but you didn't really know why like it was skim the surface but then in season two I just felt so bad for her especially because Georgia wasn't seeing the value of therapy so she was kind of making fun of the fact that Ginny was doing it and not understanding Ginny's perspective and it was only when she actually sat in therapy with her that it clicked for Georgia and I think she realized how much Ginny was hurting and especially when Ginny started self-harming I felt 
really bad honestly and I did see some people saying like Ginny has no reason to self-harm or whatever but I think that's silly I mean anyone could have reasons to do that you know it doesn't always need justifying but Ginny has a lot going for her and she definitely deserves compassion as much as any of the other characters do and I find it odd when people say oh she's so annoying and then love characters like Max or Georgia who also mess up and are flawed you know like I don't know whether it's because there's it's the white viewers saying that being like oh my god I can't stand Ginny but it's not like she's the only annoying character in the show so many characters in the show can be annoying I, I kind of think that's the point because it's very dramatic but my biggest issue with Ginny is honestly how self-absorbed she is like it's really it's really bad and that's something that still carries into the second season. I know a lot of people stopped watching because of this because they just found it too much. So she's really reactive basically, really self-absorbed and has this very strong sort of victim mentality of woe is me, my life is really hard. And yes, she has been through some really terrible traumatic experiences, but it was the fact that she kept then directing that anger, which was fair enough, towards her mum. And that was the problem, just so hateful and almost embarrassed of her mum or making these snide remarks and not really attempting to perhaps look at it from her mum's perspective or ask why and there was loads that she didn't know about her mum like she didn't know that her mum had been abused as a child and she was really upset to hear that and just so much information she was missing um, and instead of asking her mum she would often jump to conclusions or try and send her mum subtle hints or subtle threats like burning the evidence from the crime or whatever so her mum would know that something was up but she wasn't like telling her and it all became very I think petty after a while like she was treating her mum as if her mum was her mortal enemy and it was just a bit ridiculous because I mean that's your mum like why don't you just ask her that was something I was really struggling to understand why can't you just go to her and say mum what is the deal with this and another thing was that she was often saying to people, I know what happened with Marcus and then with Hunter, where she basically tells them, you haven't suffered like I've suffered and you need to check your privilege because you, your struggles aren't as bad as mine. And it just came across quite lacking in empathy, to be honest. Um, and of course, she's been like she's had so many bad experiences she's been othered literally her whole life and people don't understand that even her mum obviously doesn't have an insight or perspective into the experience of that even if she feels bad she hasn't lived it so she wouldn't know so Ginny has dealt with a lot of that so she has a right to be angry but just sometimes the way that she said that came across mean and there were quite a few instances where she was mean like I'm not hating on her character I like her character I'm just acknowledging that like the way she spoke to Marcus one time where she was being nasty to him and saying like get out of my room and all this it was just so mean because he was clearly getting really upset and then afterwards she felt so bad and was like texting him asking if he was okay and it did really affect him you know and I just was like do you have to uh, I don't know. And another example of this insensitivity is like when she's trying to resolve her relationship with Max and talk to her. Max is in the middle of her big musical performance. So she's running on and off stage. She obviously needs to be in the right headspace. And Ginny keeps tapping her on the shoulder like, Max, we need to talk. I'm really sorry. It's just, and trying to explain as Max is flitting on and off stage. And I was like, oh my God, like, what is Ginny doing? She's claiming she cares about her, but she's literally distracting Max. I'm surprised Max didn't forget all her lines, honestly, because that would be so bothersome. Like, does she, what's wrong with her? Couldn't she have just sat down and waited till the performance was finished? Like, what a way to ruin it. I don't know, that just pissed me off. But I do feel that Ginny did learn over the show and that's why I like her character because she did grow. She started to have more compassion for her mum and be more on her mum's side when she learned more about her. And she was genuinely happy to be her mum's maid of honor on her wedding day and support her. And I genuinely believe she started to come to more of an understanding that everything her mum had done was to protect her, at least so her, so her mum says. And I was happy with that too, like Ginny genuinely supporting her mum and wanting her to be happy. And I really loved in the final episode when Georgia was going back to her old trauma patterns, patterns of just wanting to run away 
and not communicate anything to Paul. And then Ginny was like, whoa, no, you can't do this again. How about you try staying here and honestly communicating to Paul and being vulnerable? And I like that Ginny called out her mum because even though she's the child, she still had the maturity to see that her mum needs guidance on things too sometimes. Um, so yeah, I really like that. I also really appreciated how Ginny handled the breakup with Marcus afterwards when she realized she shouldn't take it so personally and that he was actually depressed and he knew that he couldn't obviously make her happy if he wasn't happy himself and then when she did realize that she came over to his house and said she just wanted to be there as a friend and support him and help him through it without trying to pressure him back into a relationship with her and I thought that was really mature and sweet that she just cared about him as a person regardless of whether they were together or not um, but I do have very mixed feelings about her because then other times she just pissed me off a bit like when her and um, Marcus had broken up and then she said to her mum that she didn't think she'd be happy ever again because Marcus was her best friend and it was just a bit lacking in perspective because of course he's one of your best friends but Max was right there your mum was right there like there are other people that care about you this boy is not your whole world but this was kind of a repeated issue of her really needing to be dating someone needing male validation I think a big part of that was just honestly trying to fit in trying to feel a part of something like when she really wanted her, the friendship group to like her before they became friends she was doing anything even if it meant disrespecting herself whether it's smoking weed or stealing something just to fit in and it was honestly it honestly made me sad especially considering how badass her mom is and how much her mom tells her to be confident and yet I don't know I feel like Ginny has very low self-esteem and it actually makes me so sad like there are multiple points where she is almost in awe of her mum and jealous of her at the same time like how does my mum manage to get the attention of so many guys and seduce them and like do that whole cleavage trick like how how does she do that I'm not as pretty as her and she just didn't really believe that she was beautiful or powerful in the same way that her mum was and that just made me so sad because she is literally so beautiful like I don't know that just upsets me so much that she couldn't see it like that she couldn't see what she had to offer and then she would come to her mum for advice and her mum would be like what do you mean Ginny like you're beautiful oh I have to say side note Ginny's relationship with Marcus was so badly written at the beginning I swear to god they did not know what to do with his character like it was so cringy at the beginning like they had some really good scenes like their first kiss scene was really well written um and the scene I think where they're in the shower room and they talk that was good too but aside from that so many of their early scenes were so poor like it was just this really forced like conflict and angst between them and then them like judging each other and her trying to hurt him by saying yeah by the way me and Hunter are going to get intimate for the first time because he's my boyfriend trying to make him jealous it was just so cringy and then his whole forced mysterious loner artsy bad boy man a few words stereotype thing he had going on was again so cringy like I was actually like Ugh. and she was trying so hard to get his attention and stuff I don't know was that just me I like his character but it was just so awkward in the beginning and I did not like him I'm glad he grew on me as the show went on but at the beginning I was like ew ew this boy is so up himself like who does he think he is like can he stop yeah and it was really awkward too and the way their flirting scenes were written and then when he came through her window and they like kissed and had sex for the first time it was so rushed they barely knew each other keep in mind her character's like 15 when the show starts I was like ew ew as a 20 year old I just felt like I was invading something like I should not have been watching that I felt creepy I was like Ugh, I don't need to see this and that whole scene was so rushed though wasn't it like her losing her virginity to him wasn't that so weird like the way it was written and the way that they just suddenly sort of started I don't know just so many moments with Ginny that were not well written kept happening like when she was talking to Marcus for the first time they weren't together and then she grabbed his motorbike and then took it for a drive around like the yard again without his permission and then later when she wanted to run away she just took his motorbike without permission at that point they were together but she didn't ask and I was like you know what that is so selfish and disrespectful that's expensive if you crash it who's gonna pay it's his like 
it's not yours to touch. You need to ask permission. So that just bothered me. Oh, and then when she was talking to, I think, I don't know, Abby about the divorce. And then Jenny was like, oh my God, it's not just about you and your problems, Abby. Like genuinely, she can't see that other people also maybe have struggles. And just because hers are worse, that doesn't mean that they're struggles are invalid just because they're going through something especially a friend and then the whole shoplifting thing like the fact she didn't think it through because she wanted so badly to fit in um oh yeah and then when she started telling marcus about her mum's her mum Ginny. Ginny, the stupid names, I always get them mixed up. Her mum George's deepest secrets about killing someone and she just tells Marcus that even though they've barely been dating. It's like, how stupid are you? Why would you do that? Oh my God. Oh yeah, also in general, her lack of self-control, her desperation for male validation was also, I didn't love it. Although I will say as a teenager, I'm gonna cut her some slack because we can all be so messy and embarrassing as teenagers, but I did cringe a lot. I think it was more of a writing issue to be honest, but when she took this selfie of herself, like with her bra on and then sent it to Hunter, like, is this sexy? Just the question itself implies so much insecurity. And then when he doesn't respond to it because maybe he's uncomfortable, she like sent it to Max to check it was a good photo, which I thought was weird. Why would you send that to your gay best friend? Like, isn't that just a weird thing to do? I don't know. And then she sends it to Marcus immediately when she doesn't get a response from Hunter. And at that point, she was with Hunter, which meant she was cheating on him to send this half naked photo to Marcus. Like, why would you send it to him? Do you, did you not think it through? Do you know what people can do with a photo like that? And now that there's that digital footprint, like, why would you send that? I just, ew, ew. And considering her age, like, I don't need to see that. It's gross. It's like sexualizing teenagers. I don't need it. And I know some of my, my viewers don't like it when I talk about the sexualization of teenagers in shows because they say I'm being like prudish or something, but like, come on guys. I just have a moral compass around this and I just find it a bit weird personally. It's fine if you like it. I just, I'm not into it. It grosses me out. And her hypocrisy was so stupid because she's always hating on her mum, Georgia, let's say for, for cheating or for being a liar and keeping secrets. And I just thought that was ridiculous considering the whole show is Ginny keeping secrets, Ginny cheating on Hunter and Ginny lying to Max about the fact that she liked Marcus. And then she gets annoyed at her mum for doing things that are not that different. That just annoyed me. Oh yeah, and the fact that she even dated Hunter in the first place I thought was really interesting because it was like she just really wanted to feel like she had a boyfriend because of that sense of status. But I don't think she really, or is it status? Status. But she never really liked him. What was she doing? You could see that she, the attraction to him was quite weak and he was asking her out and she was like, okay. But that was well written though, to be fair. That was well written because so many girls I'm sure can relate to that where you know you don't really like the guy. You know he doesn't fit your criteria. There's not really that chemistry there but you feel like there's something wrong with you for saying no to him, especially with women that very much has been drilled into us in society. Like if you turn down the offer of a date, what's wrong with you? You should be desperate. You should want to date him. And there's this shaming almost around us saying, that we're not attracted to the guy or something because we just need to take what we can get. It's very weird and I've certainly noticed it. Like when you say, I don't like that guy, people don't believe you. They're like, you must be wrong. Like you, you have to like him. That was well written, I guess. This pressure to be in a relationship, to display your relationship publicly so everyone knows, everyone like asking questions and being all involved, thinking there's something wrong with you if you haven't had a boyfriend or whatever, that is quite relatable to the high school experience. Um, and also just her general disrespect towards her mom again, like that scene where she said to Georgia, you're just jealous that I'm making friends and you couldn't when you were young. Like what a horrible thing to say to your mom, so horrible. And also when she started learning more about her mom's motives, her mum's motives, it wasn't like she just, at least from what we know, she's not killing people out of this sadistic enjoyment. It seems that she's genuinely doing it because she felt like she had to or it was the right thing. She's not just killing random people for fun, you know? Like, one guy, it was because, again, she felt like she had no other choice and she only married him because she was worried about losing Ginny. And she killed the stepfather because she was 
so worried about him traumatizing Ginny and repeatedly hurting her because Georgia herself was repeatedly abused as a child and she knew that it wouldn't stop there and it would only get worse so she like you know I'm not saying it was right but it's not like she's just a sadist who thinks it's funny or something or enjoys it or gets a thrill out of it she didn't enjoy it and then the other time it happened it was an accident so yeah it's bad but and I'm not saying that Ginny should be delighted that her mum has killed people. Like, that's a very traumatising thing to find out. But it took a while for her to acknowledge that what her mum was doing was out of care and protection for her. And her mum didn't want to hurt her or anything like that. And if Ginny's upset, she totally has every right to be because it's really bad. But she could have just spoken to her mum about it, I think, rather than running away with Austin. Or you know how she made that blue smoothie and she left it out for her mum to see as like a subliminal message like a threat but a subtle one like oh I could poison you too mum or I know what you did it's just very petty you know I will say that the relationship between mother and daughter is one of my favorite parts of the show and I felt like it was so impactful so juicy and very emotional at points there were at least three scenes I can think of that made me cry especially scenes involving Georgia and Ginny reconciling or the scene where Ginny really freaked out because she thought that her mum was some kind of sadistic killer or something and they were just really well written and I also thought that the general misunderstandings and miscommunications between the two of them were really strong and I like that it wasn't flat storytelling because at points I genuinely was questioning who to root for because at one point I was totally on Ginny's side I was like oh my god her mum has been lying to her for years and not really telling her about her dark past so of course Ginny's gonna feel like she can't trust her of course she's gonna be scared and resentful but then at other points I was like no George is like trying to communicate with her and you know being really genuine and Ginny's like being really judgy and not understanding not trying to see it from George's point of view so that was really good writing like there were multiple points where I could see both of their points of view and I just love that I love some nuanced storytelling also Georgia was definitely lacking some insight into the fact that she'll never really understand Ginny's experience as someone who's half black and it was so interesting that Georgia started to realize that like when the therapist brought it up and also the way that Georgia handled it when Ginny was arrested she was going to be happy to leave Ginny overnight in the police station I was thinking her being in the police station it means something different to her than what it means to you like what are you doing what do you mean you're not going to go and pick her up like I know she's pissed you off but you can't just leave her there I don't know that's really bad but she just was lacking some perspective around that I mean in other times she she tried but yeah it's complicated and again there are so many things about Ginny that I like she can be a free thinker I love her relationship with her brother Austin I thought it was really cute and she was obviously quite protective of him and in terms of her general I guess occasional entitlement um, and her regular issues with, with and her regular issues with her mum she reminds me a lot of Rory from Gilmore Girls I think there are so many references to Gilmore Girls in the show maybe they were trying to suggest that there's a parallel between her and Rory um, which is interesting but the next character now that I want to talk about is Georgia so I find it really bizarre when people are very hypercritical of Ginny and then say that Georgia's such an icon and blah 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 now I'm not going to deny Georgia is an icon some of her lines are so funny and I love I love her confidence like it's really attractive you know in some of the scenes <laughs> where people are saying oh can you imagine how you'd look if this happened and then she mutters under her breath I look amazing obviously like she just she just is always complimenting herself and I just love that and I love when people are getting angry at her she doesn't react she keeps her cool and she's like okay I see that there's been some mixed messaging going on here hmm. she just is always collected I feel like it takes a lot to get to her and I really like that but you can't deny she has messed up many times she's made a lot of mistakes and it's weird to compare her mistakes to Ginny when they're not even comparable like Georgia has literally killed people she's messed up way more times in her life than Ginny has you can't deny it um, and I know that we fall for her charm as the other characters do but then it becomes very easy to to not see those darker sides of her almost and then hyper focus and whatever some stupid thing Ginny said which isn't even really that big a deal yeah and it is funny to me that 
maybe this show is trying to tie into a larger social commentary that Georgia can literally get away with murder and then Ginny is criticized for things that you can't even compare they're not even half as bad I understand as well that Georgia is a nuanced character like I've said she was abused she was hurt and when she became pregnant at a young age she did not have that strong support system she didn't feel supported by her family and then she was really worried that um, the baby daddy's family would try and take her baby away from her and even though when she was older she obviously regretted it and realized it was irrational she was a dumb kid and she didn't know what to do and I think that makes her a very like sympathetic character even if you can't relate to her exact situation and it was so sad to me that she escaped from this abusive family dynamic and then grew up and then started dating and married this guy who became really physically violent with her and it's so sad that pattern of abuse was recreated and again she's in a situation where she's like do I run away and so she frames him because originally when I found out that she'd like framed him I thought that's really bad there's no coming back from that that's so unforgivable you can't just go around like framing people but the thing I didn't know was that he was abusive and when we learn that it makes her a more interesting person because he's so not likable that you're like okay I understand somewhat why she did that and it made me sad honestly that Ginny always thought the worst of her when like I said, Georgia really did think that she was trying to protect her kids. She thought that what she was doing was in her kids' best interest. Even if she messed up, she genuinely really loves them and cares about them, even if she doesn't always express it in the best way. And the thing that really bothered me was when Ginny went out with her friends and snuck out without telling her mom and her mom had organized all these fun things to do all these activities and Ginny was being so snide and harsh and judgmental about it when all her mum was trying to do was do something special for her and that kind of upset me a bit to be honest and this made me realize when you zoom out that a lot of the adult characters are way more interesting and likable than the children characters are like the underage ones it's really funny how that works but I found myself rooting for the adults way more also George's character reminds me so much of Lorelai from Gilmore Girls her is like this free-spirited kind of childish mother and the way that she cooks really like childish foods for her kids and they order donuts and they do a donut picnic on their car and all this stuff that and the way they sit and watch movies together and eat junk food it's just it's so much like Gilmore Girls they even make a reference to Gilmore Girls which is really cool because I just finished my Gilmore Girls series on this channel aside from like a couple more videos I have to do about it so I love that and that's actually the reason the main reason why I watch this show is because so many of my Gilmore Girls fans were like oh my god you'll love Ginny and Georgia it has similar vibes and it literally does it's really cool especially the small town vibe and then obviously the character of Joe who works in like the local he owns it doesn't he yeah he owns it like this restaurant cafe he reminds me so much of Luke from Gilmore Girls who owned Luke's diner and that was like the hot spot where everyone goes to talk and hang out and so many important scenes are set there which is literally the same same with Joe's place it's so cool I love that that similarity that parallel it's just really 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 cool um, even with the love interest you can see their parallels to characters like Dean and Jess from Gilmore Girls that's so cute and I like the I like that it reminds me of Glee as well with the music and stuff although it was really cringy but still so obviously Georgia messed up a lot with her parenting because she hid so much from Ginny but at the same time, she knew how much Ginny would judge her if she told her, so I understand why she didn't tell her and she was trying to keep her safe. But one thing that people just do not talk about, do not acknowledge enough, is those moments where Georgia totally crossed the line as a mum, like her smoking weed or whatever it was with Marcus. Like after trying to discipline them, she then acts like the cool mom by smoking with him and just the way she handles stuff sometimes was so tacky and immature like the kids slam their doors and she's like oh we're slamming doors now Ugh, I'll slam my door too if you're gonna be like that and it was just so pathetic like you don't have to stoop to their level you're the adult you, they're the children like grow up and so often she was giving Ginny the silent treatment of being like she needs to apologize to me and I was like really and also what pissed me off is when her and Ginny were fighting Ginny want to, didn't want to eat dinner and so she was like fine well I'm just gonna move all the food out so you don't have anything to eat which is literally abusive then Ginny comes down there's no food and her mum sat there eating the last bagel to rub it in her face or something and I was like what 
is this? How immature are we? That's so dumb. Oh, and then when she found out that Ginny had self-harmed, rather than being just initially upset the first thing she did was like yell at her and be like wow you've been self-harming show me it show me the scars and trying to physically grab her to look for them and that was so like if someone's been self-harming and clearly hates themselves in Ginny's case why are you then gonna make them feel even worse about it by tackling them like what is that achieving that's a horrible thing to do and George's whole it's so stupid the whole are you a bee thing sting first no if they sting first you sting back approach of basically hitting back harder and being aggressive if it's justified was a really toxic message to send to her kids and it definitely has given Austin a lot of almost aggression like I could see Austin becoming a very damaged aggressive kid because he went and he like hurt that kid in his class who was bullying him and he starts to think that physical violence is the answer and being like oh they deserved it they stung first and that's just a really bad mentality and Georgia modeled that so strongly to her kids and you can see it's influencing them even Ginny the way she went in and blackmailed her teacher because that's how she's been taught to handle situations is by being really aggressive and that's a big issue because Georgia believes and believed for so long that vulnerability was a weakness and it took her so long to kind of start to learn that's not the case and then eventually luckily she came forward to Ginny and she was like oh actually I thought about it and your vulnerability is your superpower you know like you don't need to pretend to be strong all the time and this was a huge is issue with Georgia is that she likes to pretend everything's fine not talk about real things thinks emotions are weak and it's just it's all a trauma response the way she wants to continually run away because she's scared is like a flight response so it's really sad to see that she she really wants to be strong and to set a good example to her kids but I don't know I feel bad for Georgia because she's been through all this trauma and she feels the need to constantly be this hero figure for everyone and she's always saying to her kids it's okay I can handle it I'll get us out of it and then when she starts dating Paul she's like don't worry I'll deal with the kids I'll sort this issue out with the teacher you don't need to do anything like she's so hyper independent like Lorelai from Gilmore Girls was so focused on saving everyone and I always think well who's gonna save you you know you can't manage everything and cover everything up you know she's not used to being helped I think because she felt so unsupported she's used to being alone but that's actually really sad and that could end her up in some pretty sticky situations like she's got to learn at some point to allow people to help her and she also doesn't have many friends as well like it's funny as charismatic as Georgia is she really does not have many friends and she acknowledges this as well. So she definitely keeps people a bit at bay. Oh, and a good example of this hero complex thing she has was the way that she killed Cynthia's husband. People were saying she just kills now for joy, but I don't buy that because she literally was crying and seemed upset about it. But why on earth did she muffle Cynthia's husband what a stupid idea I think she knew she thought she was doing Cynthia a favor because she knew that Cynthia needed to move on and him sort of being alive was was dragging out that process more making it more painful but you don't go okay I'll help you and then kill him like you need to stay out of it it's not your business and killing someone even if you think you're doing it for the greater good or whatever is still like object objectively wrong and what's even more fucked up is the fact that her child Austin saw it and she didn't know and he never said anything like because he didn't want to get her in trouble but what's that going to do to him? Think about how young he is. Imagine the effect it would have on your development knowing that your own mother killed someone who was in a coma for seemingly no reason. Like, why? That is so traumatizing. So yeah, George is a really interesting, complicated character. I'm excited to see where she goes in season three, if there is a season three. But you can see a lot of her trauma manifesting, unfortunately, in the way that she parented her kids and her relationships and her relationship with Paul, not always feeling like they were a team, feeling like she needed to do everything herself. Um, also, literally, her criminal background. Like, why do people forget about that? <laughs> she literally, like, she's a criminal, which, to be honest, I kind of love that. It's kind of badass, you know? It's fun that she's not just the average mom and that she's got this whole dark past and everything. It's pretty juicy. Um, although I have to say in terms of the way that her romantic relationships were written, I found her whole subplot with Joe so weird and pointless. I really like him, but I don't know what the point of it is. And I really thought it would just last for a few episodes, but it was dragged on so much. And then in season two it was dragged on so much. And she just doesn't, 
like she kind of fancies him but doesn't really do anything about it and he just seems so into her and it honestly doesn't reflect well on him it makes him seem so pathetic to still be obsessed with her when nothing's happening and for him to be so invested in her when again he has no reason to be i just don't like that subplot as much as i like him and i think he's a great character and a great guy i just think it's disrespecting him a bit with him waiting around i just don't like it i find i find that really boring and then with paul i love paul i think he's a great guy but i'm honestly surprised that her and him are such a thing because i really thought she would end up with zion like they had so much chemistry to me and obviously he was the initial father of her child so i genuinely thought that it would be about them getting back together or something so i mean i was surprised honestly i was really surprised but also he's so handsome as well like why not go back to him? I don't get I don't get it, okay? I don't understand that. But I I guess Paul's nice and everything, so it's fine. Um, but now I want to talk about Marcus as a character. So Marcus is Ellen's teenage son. He's the twin brother of Maxine, who's Ginny's best friend. So it's that whole trope of dating your best friend's brother, forbidden love. That's basically what was going on between Marcus and Ginny, where she had this friendship with Max, but also she wanted to be with Max's brother without telling her, so she was dating Marcus behind the scenes. I'm, I've already touched on him earlier, but I don't like the way his character was written, personally. I thought it was really lazy, really tacky. He kept having a personality transplant every two seconds. Like, one minute he's this sensitive guy who you really like, but then you remember how he was earlier when he was just a douchebag but then and he, it seemed like he was just fucking people around like Padma but then apparently we're meant to believe that actually he has his genuine feelings for Ginny but they did not make that believable it was very much insta love they went from just hanging out to him being like I can't stop thinking about Ginny I think I'm in love with her I want to be her boyfriend and I was just like what like, I don't buy it and then in season two he's so vulnerable and loving and I was just like <laughs> I thought I wasn't meant to like this guy and then I started really liking him and I was just confused because I, it, he was so weirdly written and I feel like they could have done more with his character honestly with us knowing that his best friend had died and then his depression storyline of his mental health and everything and him really struggling I think we could have gone even more in depth with that personally it was sort of brushed over like oh he's in a bad headspace oh he he's had some episodes like this before and then they sort of moved on but I was like no we need more explanations there but yeah i think him and Ginny makes sense she definitely had a lot of chemistry with him compared to let's say hunter so i i understand that she felt safe with him and it makes sense they would date but it was just the way they went about it was poorly constructed frankly although i do like his character and i think he's really cute i also find him very fake deep at times especially in season two he was all like oh christmas is just a capitalist thing i don't celebrate valentine's day because it's just a part of consumeristic society one of those kinds of people that thinks they're really deep by going against the grain and i just find that kind of person really insufferable honestly my least favorite thing about marcus i have to say overall is his boundary issues like at the beginning when he was flirting with Ginny she obviously didn't really like him so I found it weird how he would like come up to her and try and be all romantic and then put his face really close to hers and stare at her I think it was meant to be romantic but it honestly was a bit weird considering the tension between them that he thought it was a good idea I don't know and also the fact that at that point they were kind of arguing a bit they weren't boyfriend girlfriend and yet he thought it was a good idea to just randomly climb in through her window because they're neighbors i mean to be honest i love the the neighbors to lovers trope so i always think it's kind of hot when they look through the window and they're like hi i don't know i just find that so adorable that's like my dream you know is to fall in love with my neighbor i just like you know the person you see through the window i love that that's so cute but in this case it was just creepy it was creepy because without warning without knocking she's chilling in her room and suddenly he's just climbing in through the window keep in mind she barely i repeat barely knows this man and they've argued a bit or flirted a bit or whatever just a few interactions and he's like yep i'll just come in through the window and then she'll literally say like what are you doing in here get out and i'm like oh my god and it's the fact the show was so casually breezing over it as if it wasn't a big deal and the only person in the show to take it seriously was paul and he was like what are we gonna do about this like he was the only one with a brain to be like hang on this is not okay like this dude is climbing in through this 16 year old girl's window and uh, I just can't it's giving such Twilight Edward Cullen vibes and not 
in a good way. Like that is creepy AF. The only thing I can say I'm grateful for is at least the show was remotely kind of self-aware because they mentioned that it's weird for him to think it's okay to climb in through her window and Georgia made a joke like he should really learn to date you properly and use the front door and I like that because also I never saw him taking Ginny out on dates. I wondered whether he was actually like taking her out somewhere or were they just hanging out in her room the whole time? Like ew, I'm sorry. Ew. Ew. But as the show went on, they did grow on me a lot as a couple, and I thought it was really cute at some point, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, I will say, though, with their relationship being so rushed and with Ginny hooking up with him so quickly, like, weirdly rushed, it made me wonder whether that was some kind of trauma response because of her stepdad and how he'd been like touching her inappropriately and stuff like hitting on her i was wondering whether maybe this was her way of trying to cope by feeling like she had control over her body that she was empowered in her sexuality but actually it was coming from the wrong place just because of how rushed it was with marcus i don't know um, but i didn't like how marcus behaved after they hooked up for the first time and then that one time she saw him in school and he sort of was with his friends and looked at her but didn't say hi almost blew her off like what was that about? Like, I don't know. Are oh, you yeah, and him ghosting her for a bit? What? Oh no, his phone broke, so it's fine. But still, it was just, it was weird. This is the part of the video I'm the most excited to talk about, which is the portrayal of Max, AKA Maxime, Ginny's best friend. Because wow, wow. I do not know how anyone could hate on Ginny and not hate on Max, because for me, she takes the cake as, the worst, the worst character. You can't even, wow. I cannot stand this girl. And I tried so hard to like her, to see her good qualities. I hate her, I hate her scenes. Every time she comes on screen, I cringe. She is the cringiest character in the whole show. Like, she thinks she's so cool. And you know, I love that they're trying to bring in some representation by having her like girls and be so expressive about that. But honestly, it felt like at points her whole personality was just talking about girls and how hot this girl was and how sexy this girl looked. And it was just so lame. Like, it was just so embarrassing, like the way she'd try and flirt with girls and stuff. I don't know, I didn't like it. And just so painfully and secure with how she tried to get her crush's attention and then wallow in misery if they didn't like her and honestly so ungrateful like she has these friends there to hang out with um all these talents she has for singing and all these things and she's there just whinging about this girl not liking her back and being all mopey about it it was literally so annoying yeah there were some good things about her character i like that her whole arc wasn't about coming out to her family and they already supported her sexuality and i like how bold she was with going after the girls that she liked um and I, I like that they didn't really like fetishize her being with a girl or anything like that but oh my god her reaction to Ginny and Marcus dating was absolutely disgusting now she had a right to be pissed off have a yell have a scream but that should have been it once she'd done that told them off iced them out for maybe a few days that it, it should have been over with but it carried on for so long with her being mean to Marcus but she was punishing Ginny even more for it and basically turning the whole friendship group against her and isolating her literally bullying her and it was so freaking mean like how unforgiving she was and then she shut out Abby too who hadn't even done anything wrong it was just that Abby knew about it so she blamed Abby for that and Abby was trying so hard bringing her gifts doing gestures for her birthday trying so hard to talk to her to win her over and Max had no like respect for that or any like she wasn't even giving a little bit of credit like okay to be fair it is sweet I mean she is trying like no she was just being horrible and continually dismissing any attempts of reconciliation and at first I was like okay she's mad let her be mad she has a right to be mad anyone would be but as it went on I was like oh my god this girl is so fucking mean like she is so unforgiving and hateful and it's like she just loves the drama she loves to be a narcissist and just stir the pot and have something to fight about so she was at one point just really wallowing in it for the sake of it and she didn't even need to be mad anymore but she was just enjoying the drama and i hate that like she's such a drama queen i find that so unattractive oh yeah and also the fact that she dobbed on marcus to her mum about it like marcus had been a good brother to her he'd taken care of her when she was drunk he'd been nice to her and yet she went and kind of violated that sibling code by 
telling on him to their parents. Like it's so childish and just mean to be frank. And I was shocked that Marcus had gotten punched and yet later on she, she physically attacked him herself. Like what's wrong with her? Now, did she have a right to be upset to some degree? Yes. She probably felt a bit discarded and like they hadn't bothered to communicate. Maybe it made her insecure because she felt like Ginny had only befriended her in the first place to get close to Marcus. So yeah, she has a right to be upset. And she's obviously a really big giver, a big sharer. So maybe it upset her that she didn't feel like that openness was being reciprocated or like Ginny didn't trust me enough to tell me I thought we were best friends and okay so I understand that but it went on way too long the whole bitchiness about it and yeah I also really don't like that comment she made when Ginny was on posted on YouTube and there were some people making really racist comments about her which is obviously really upsetting borderline traumatizing and then well it is traumatizing isn't it it just is no it is online abuse is traumatic and <laughs> max sees the youtube comment and rather than being like oh my gosh that's horrible she's like oh my god you're so famous now Ginny. like you've got haters i wish i had haters that is so disgusting like Ginny was obviously upset you don't turn it into like a joke as if Ginny shouldn't be upset because she's popular now oh and i also didn't like that max was really putting this pressure on Ginny for them to like lose their virginities at the same time and then got annoyed that Ginny hadn't told her that she wasn't a virgin like such boundary issues it's none of her business to know something that personal about Ginny like best friends don't need to know everything about each other you know it's okay to keep things, some things private that's just healthy boundaries so yeah I did not like her um, the next character we're talking about is Paul um, George's partner I guess I will say I really like his character I feel like he's really wholesome and sweet and that good positive thing that Georgia really needed in her life and I love his sense of humor I thought his friendship with Zion was so wholesome and adorable like you would think those two would hate each other because they'd be competing over Georgia but it's the fact they became friends I'm just obsessed I want to see so much more of their dynamic um, I love how when Georgia was trying to push him away he always communicated really well and he talked about being a team and I really like the way that he asked her out and expressed his feelings for her, expressed that he wanted to marry her. However, I do feel there was some pushiness and love bombing going on, like nothing insane, but it was definitely there. And I also feel that at the end, it was weird how quickly he processed and sort of got over everything she revealed to him about her crimes and like all, so many things she'd done. I know she didn't tell him everything, but she told him so much and it took him like a night, but then he processed it and he was ready to marry her. And I don't know I feel like realistically you would just need a, a bit more time to mull it over so that was a bit rushed the character of Abby she I don't know I find her really annoying to be honest like I some of her storylines were good like her being insecure about herself and her parents divorce and I hope they touch more on her ED later because that was brought up and it's kind of skimmed over but I just find her character really irritating to be honest although I do feel that she deserved better and her friends were just not very nice to her like they were not really good to her and she was clearly really upset by it and that made me sad next character is hunter he's probably my second least favorite character honestly he's one of Ginny's love interests and he's like the fake nice guy he really thinks he's a nice guy but he's just so fucking annoying i can't stand him he's so cringe like the little snapchat videos he sends like happy friday and then when he tried to seduce Ginny with this tap dance in front of the whole school he thinks he's so cool he thinks he's done something i'm like ew 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 like he just something about him gives me such an ick every time he sings i'm just like ugh. and I feel so bad for the actor he does not deserve the hate the character got but I cannot stand the character he's so cringy and I know that sounds so mean because he didn't even do anything wrong but I just can't stand this boy I can't explain it like he's so freaking lame and I know that in his relationship with Ginny it was sweet because he tried really hard to make her happy but he's just like Ew, and his arc at the end, he did nothing. The writers did not know what to do with his character. Like he was so flat and useless by the end of the show. He just, what was the point of him? Like I feel like out of all the characters that were insignificant, he was the most insignificant. What was his purpose? I don't like him. Oh yeah, the way that he had to keep doing these public grand gestures to show affection for Ginny was suspicious to me as well. Like, why does he need to do that? Why? like your relationship's valid it's so immature do you know what i mean it's very immature it's like when people say to you when are you going to make your relationship public on instagram and that's the first thing they think about before they're even serious with the person is what will my instagram friends think it's that kind of energy like when you actually have a relationship that's serious you realize that 
there's so much more to it than just sharing it on Instagram. Like any relationship that's that public, I always question it because I'm like, are you looking for validation or are you just genuinely happy? I don't know. I'm not saying you can't make a relationship public, but I always wonder when it's that, like to the degree where you're doing a tap dance in front of everyone and flowers in front of the whole school. You know, it's just a bit much. It's a bit much. Oh yeah, and the fact that he punched Marcus in the face when Marcus still had a concussion, technically, what's wrong with him? And also physical violence is not the answer. I understand he was pissed at Ginny for cheating on him, but you don't go and punch Marcus. It's misdirected anger. It's aggressive, frankly. Marcus didn't deserve to be punched in the face, you know? Also, his friends, I hate them. They're disgusting. And the fact that he justifies their behavior or even is their friend at all says a lot about him. Um, so yeah, I just don't like him. I find him lame. I don't like his scenes. <laughs> I don't want him in this show. I'm sorry. I just, I can't. The only thing I, I kind of liked was that he called Ginny out for her whole oppression Olympics thing. I like that he, he said that, but still he was just like, I don't know, he's not the worst, but <sighs> oh my God, by the way, why are they trying to insinuate that him and Padma are gonna be a thing? That annoyed me so much. I, by the way, side note, I don't like that, that in this show, everyone has to be coupled up. No one can be single. It's so high school musical level cringe. Like the fact that they're insinuating him and Padma will be a thing. Then we've got Marcus and Ginny and then Georgia and Paul. And then they realize, oh my God, Zion can't be single. He needs to get over Georgia. So they have him meet someone. And then they're like, oh my God, Joe needs to be with someone for a while. So they have him with Cynthia. And then I was like, okay, this is too much. Then we have so much focus on Max's relationships. And I was like, this is too much now. And then Abby, they're like, right, Abby needs to be with someone. So in season two, suddenly she's got a love interest. You don't understand how much I hate it. I hate, it gives me Harry Potter vibes where they're like, okay, everyone from the same high school needs to be paired up together and married by the end. Like, no, no. Sometimes people are just single. <laughs> it's so dumb. So anyone else? Oh yeah, Zion. I really like Zion. He's Ginny's biological father. Um, honestly, I would have kind of preferred him as a love interest for Georgia than these other more relevant characters I think but I don't know I really like Zion I like that he's not too reactive he really probably should have told Georgia about Ginny's self-harming but at the same time Ginny was so adamant that he shouldn't tell Georgia I felt like he was worried that Ginny would be angry at him so I understood that he was in a complicated situation but I really like how he parented Ginny a lot of the time like when she came to him about the teacher bullying her the way that Zion gave advice was just really grounded and he followed up and he he made her go and see a therapist like I just and the way that she was so stressed about Marcus and he was like Ginny I really think you should just be focusing on therapy right now like there's more important things to worry about than a boy I just love it you know and yeah however I will say that even though I like the future older version of Zion I have a lot of issues with the portrayal of his past self just because of the age gap between him and Georgia and obviously the fact that she got pregnant at like 15 and he was about two years older is just really gross to me. I can't with that. Like what is up with that? Oh wait, he might even have been three years older than her actually if he was on a gap year before uni. Ew, ew, no let's not. I'm sorry, that's so disgusting. Oh yeah, another character I really like is Nick, Georgia's co-worker. I just feel like he's again really emotionally grounded. Although... I'll be really angry if that private investigator he's dating was only dating him for a cover and not because he had genuine feelings because Nick liked him so much and that's just so wrong for someone to use you as a cover, especially like in a gay relationship, that would be a really problematic portrayal. So I hope that the investigator does have genuine feelings for him and it's just that he was also dating him for part of the case. But I am concerned about this because in around the finale, I think it was, when Nick confronted him about it. I don't know, the guy's answer of do you like me, it was not very reassuring, like his response, he didn't really say anything. So I'm really worried now that he was just dating Nick as like a ploy or a cover and it was a lie along with everything else and that would actually be really messed up. So I hope that's not the case, but I really like Nick's character. I kind of like that he was onto Georgia from the beginning and I also like that although his is he gay or bisexual? I'm pretty sure he's gay. I like that 
we weren't it wasn't obvious up front what his sexuality was nor was that important like we don't need the very first bit of information offered up about him to be like his sexual orientation he has other parts of his character obviously i really like that another character is oh yeah that student who Ginny befriends what was her name brassia i honestly i feel bad because she's such a sweet girl but i feel like her character was really kind of neglected and pointless and wasn't really doing much in the same way that Joe's character felt a little bit pointless and also like Ellen's husband him not really doing anything even though he was really sweet and nice it's the same vibe here with with Brassia like she's so nice but I don't like her subplot romance I know it sounds really mean but I didn't really care because I feel like it seems so insignificant and irrelevant to the main plot they probably could have tied it in better and it also really bothers me that Ginny was saying she felt like she never really fit in with the white kids and never really fit in with the black kids but then when the black community at the school is trying to be friends with her Ginny's not she's been kind of awkward and isn't really making an effort like the only reason she started forming a friendship with them in the first place was because her own friendship group had dumped her and she was lonely and felt like she had no other options she's not really reciprocating it and wasn't that interested so that was so bizarre to me but those are my overall thoughts about the characters now i just do want to touch a bit on the controversy with the show and some things about it that i personally didn't like which is why it's not like a five star show for me so we're going to start with the cringe factor and the musicals as in the singing it's too much to be honest it's too much like the singing the way they were constantly breaking out into dance in this and the whole emphasis on like the school play and then all these scenes of the play and and the singing and I don't know I just find it I find it ugh, it's so cringy it's really awkward to watch like it just makes me go oh cringy and yeah I think a lot of the characters as well because the dialogue is so cringy often certain scenes made me die of embarrassment and i'd say it was only really like austin and joe and georgia that didn't make me want to like cringe the whole time with their scenes and maybe zion as well but yeah season two definitely got bad better in terms of the cringe factor but season one was actually really hard to get through at some points especially with how teenagers are written you can tell it's just written by older people who don't understand how teenagers work also i don't like that Ginny's whole friendship group is toxic and it's they're pushing that they're genuine friends but i can guarantee these people will not stay friends after high school they're not respectful towards each other and i really hated how abby and nora framed Ginny with the stealing thing they'd stolen too and they were happy to let her take the fool for it even though they'd also stolen knowing that this means something different to her than it does for them her getting caught for shoplifting and they're just like so horrible i was like ew why is she trying so hard to get their attention they're toxic and yeah and i don't like the normalization that all teenagers are into smoking uh getting drunk like doing weed and like drinking and having sex like it's so dumb not all teenagers do this also their constant talk about sex and then watching porn together and all this emphasis on it i was just like ew ew gross like why do we need it to be so sexual all the time why does everything need to be about relationships and and dating and bjs like all the time can we not can we not it's gross and then the subtle sexism when Ginny made this comment about someone going through men faster than taylor swift so i know taylor swift actually had an issue with that as well like some taylor swift fans were saying that the series should be boycotted because of the sexism of that statement and then taylor swift herself was so bothered by it she tweeted and said hey Ginny in georgia 2010 called and it wants its lazy deeply sexist joke back how about we stop degrading hard-working women by defining this shit as funny which honestly i kind of agree because that joke wasn't really necessary and i know it was just one line that was thrown away and forgotten about but still it doesn't really need to be there you know so i feel kind of bad for taylor swift i don't know what she ever did to this show also in terms of the racism theme of this show i don't want to be speaking too much on it because i don't feel right doing that like as a white person I just feel like it could be read the wrong way if I do that but I do want to say that I have an issue when a show has white writers and then they're writing about racism and Ginny's experience being like mixed as if they understand it when they don't like I feel like with a show like this you need a lot of black writers on the show and you need diversity you need different people so you can really make sure that the writers room is diverse it comes out in the way that things are constructed and the perspectives you take on things and it just makes it more authentic so in this case when that doesn't happen it just makes me feel a bit 
weird about it because it doesn't seem really genuine, I guess. And yeah, Ginny deals with microaggressions regularly. And like I said earlier, this is a big theme that's talked about in the show is racism and identity and color. It's a thing. It's discussed. It's not shoved under the rug. Like we see it discussed. And I'm glad that the show is making an effort to try and talk about this and not pretending it's not an issue or making it invisible because obviously we should discuss this, we should have conversations about it. But at the same time, with the way certain things were brushed under the rug, I found that weird as well. For example, um, all of Ginny's friends wanted to wear matching hairstyles and her hair wasn't really cooperating and they were making it frizzy as opposed to styling it like the other girls. And then she started to get judged and Ginny doesn't really respond, she just runs away to the bathroom upset. But she internalizes it but it's not really like said or addressed or punished properly so it's like the audience is left to process it and think about it and think about what it means and reflect but the show isn't actually doing it themselves which i don't really like yeah i just feel like there could have been a bit more careful consideration going into it and also how Ginny knew that her teacher was racist but then hunter said that she was being dramatic and stirring up drama in class which is literally like the angry noisy black woman stereotype that's i know it wasn't his intention to say that but that's what it insinuates and all she was trying to do was literally speak up like express what she noticed those were some moments where I was like, okay, maybe this could have been handled better. I don't know. It's made me a bit uncomfortable. But aside from that, there were also a lot of really redeeming things the show did. A lot of scenes that made me really emotional, things I really liked that it pointed to. And I really like this juicy subplot. Like anything to do with Georgia, I think is fascinating. She's definitely got the most interesting backstory in terms of everyone on the show. And I'm genuinely interested to see where it goes in season three, even though it can't be trashy, like genuinely so many things about it I really like. But I think before I form a definitive like opinion on the show, I need to see the third season and how everything pans out and where the characters go from there. But yeah, it definitely wasn't half as bad as I thought it would be. It has some really funny scenes, complicated characters. And despite the cringe, you can sort of, you can get past it, you know? Um, but I think I would have to wait to see how they wrap it up before I go and recommend it to people to watch because I need to actually see what happens with it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comments if you liked this show or not. And make sure you subscribe. I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed. I see you. 50% of you are not subscribed. I don't know what you're waiting for, frankly, because you're here. So subscribe, join the family, and I will see you for the next video.